Let's see. So Jake today says, when is NFA next week? Uh, not financial advice with me and Guy from Coin Bureau and Ben from the Crypto Wars. It should be every Thursday. It's just that last couple of times we've had some, some things going on. Guy had to do something in the metaverse, some kind of deal with Binance and uh, like a Shark Tank type thing. It sounds interesting, but uh, it was on the exact same day and time. So that's done. So we're going to be, it should be every Thursday at uh, 9 a.m. Eastern time. And it'll be on Guy's channel on uh, Coin Bureau Clips next week. Yeah, it's probably true. Rob, I think you can hammer out a lot of these crypto regulation issues if you just sit down with Gary at a cafe over some cricket powder tea. I don't, I probably, it's, it's probably very simple. I got to tell you, between us, it's no one's, it's just us right now. Nobody's watching. I think that they're dragging their feet on purpose. Call me crazy, but I'm pretty sure that they could make this all very clear, uh, very quickly, and uh, just move forward. But it's like, for some reason, they don't want to have clear regulation. And that's it. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Well, welcome. Vicky says, I have a new interview channel. I will let us interview you in a month. Absolutely. You know how to get a hold of me. Yeah, that's right. Hello, TND. Do you hold Chainlink? Yes, I do. And uh, there was this great article. Let me see if I can pull it up. Did you guys know? Uh, 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 uh. Let me show you this. <laughs> There's a couple of things I want to show you. Uh, this, dynamic NFTs. So Chainlink is, this is updated on January 23rd. So it's already, it's coming into fruition, but a dynamic NFT, what is that? Well, NFTs are pretty static, you know? They don't really change too much. I mean, upgradable and stuff like that. But I mean, you have to do that manually. But I don't, this is all metaverse stuff. So like, it would be like, well, like play during game. Like if you go into a certain section of a game and you conquer some boss, automatically you level up and then your NFT levels up and it's like an automatic type of thing, which is on-chain stuff. But what about off-chain? And I thought this was interesting. So Chainlink, of course, is an oracle, and it brings in outside data into, on, into the blockchain, right? So let's just say that in the future, we have an NFT that represents a house. Well, how do you know what that house, what the value is, what's happened to it in the past, good and bad, and everything kind of like information that you want to get, especially if it's on an NFT. So what it does is it'll update it automatically without having to put things in. It's kind of like, Think of like uh, Carfax, but on the blockchain. And it's for houses. And it could be for cars and it could be for any kind of asset that you really have. And you could just see like all the data uh, on the blockchain for anybody. And so like, let's say like in this example, let's say it replaces the roof. You're like, well, you know, that's good to know. And and then of course we can we can put that in and take a look at comparables other houses as far as like new roofs in a certain section and and what is the, the price per square footage or let's say that they did new doors new new windows new something or and also let's say that there was a, a massive foundation crack and they had to fix that and it would all be in the NFT data. So why is that important? I think it's important because like if we want to use these types of things in the future, it makes our lives a heck of a lot easier to do. So if you're an assessor and you're trying to look at, or a real estate agent, you're trying to look at like, like give me these houses and these properties and, and, and this type of price. And there's no, you know, uh, wacky information that, that comes out on closing. Well, this will be where it is. I know some people will say, well, that seems kind of, I mean, don't we have people to do that? Yes, we do. We do all those things. And of course, that's the whole point of technology is to make things a lot faster, easier, simpler, and cheaper and cutting out middlemen. If we can do that, that will be fantastic. So to answer your question, I do own Chainlink. And especially it's interesting that they're doing these types of things. So yeah, interesting. Also, I wanted to talk like that story, you know, just took up uh, a whole lot of, lot of time frame. But 
Ah, hold on. Let's see here. I'll answer this. What's your opinion of the Celsius Nuco plan? It sounds like an awful plan with retail clawbacks. And those other 5K on the platform get half back compared to those with less than 5K. So people have been like asking me to cover uh, the Celsius plan, and what things are going on with Celsius and how's this thing with Celsius. And uh, I haven't done much of it because first of all, uh, so everybody knows, you know, I promoted Celsius. I talked about it quite a bit, as a matter of fact. And uh, I have six figures stuck on that platform. So I'm right with you in, on, on Celsius. And Celsius was, it was a project that worked until it didn't. And it's the same thing with Voyager. Voyager worked until it, diff, diff, until it didn't, until they made this op, awful mistake of loaning $640 million to Three Rows Capital uncollateralized. Geniuses. So this, with this Celsius plan to cover it, uh, I don't think I can cover it but it's a lot of minutia and the back and forth. And it seems like the only people that know what's really going on to me and my, what I see is Simon Dixon. So follow him, Aaron Bennett, Tiffany Fong and Cam Cruz. These four people know exactly what's going on and you can follow others and, you know, to, to see what's happening, but they, they really keep up with the details of what's happening. I was asked to get to cover it when there was this thing called a Celsius squeeze going on. And I sat in on, on a Twitter spaces live and I listened to everybody complain and throw mud back and forth and nothing got accomplished whatsoever. And now those same people, the Celsius squeezers are talking about how great Celsius still is. I mean, some of them are, there was a report that came out that basically said that uh, Alex Mashinsky and Celsius was a Ponzi. And they said, we can't say, you know, uh, the exact words, but it operated as a Ponzi. And these people looked at that and go, wow, it's fantastic. They didn't call it a Ponzi. I'm like, did you not read the report? So the things that are going on and there's like, I forgot the name, Tara Wolf or something like that is, is coming in. They're like, we're going to, you know, make this thing great and it's going to be awesome. And, and, uh, I'll let you know if that is really what it comes down to it. But right now, there's really, in my personal opinion, it's not like there's a huge amount. And people would say, but Rob, what about these uh, retail clawbacks and things like that? Well, look, we tried to fight uh, Kirkland and Ellis uh, for them to make uh, the crypto that we had on that platform to not allow them to classify that uh, as Celsius's property. And that failed miserably. And they were able to do that. And then for everybody who has it in, you know, in loans and custody, and of course, we can fight them. But really what it's going to come down to is just time and what happens. Me personally, I would just rather liquidate and just move on because I'd, I have a much better feeling that I can use my funds a lot better than a new company coming in and saying, you know, we're going to do this great stuff and this great stuff. I don't trust anybody involved with it. And I'll go out of my way to, uh, to make sure <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it, honestly. That's just it. I mean, well, I can bring some people on. I asked Simon to come on and probably be here next week. We'll talk all about it. Quite honestly, I think it's, uh, I'm just kissing that six figures goodbye. So, all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Funny. Do you think Celsius plan will not, I don't know, because... Well, first of all, this new place, they're like, we're not going to be, they, they, they say, it's funny because like they say that it's not going to do like the old ways and they're not going to bring in the old uh, management team and it's going to be totally new and it's going to be totally awesome. Basically what it is, is they're getting, they're getting your assets on the cheap and they're going to fire up this Bitcoin mining platform and everything's going to be fantastic. Look, maybe it will. I just reserve judgment, but... I mean, from, from here on out, like, I'm just tired of people saying like, you should get behind Celsius and those other things. Like Celsius is a bunch of fraudsters. And, and then people would say, well, Rob, you don't understand. They're, they're doing this, this, this great Bitcoin mining operation. And then if you take a look at uh, all the financials, you'll see that uh, they were hemorrhaging money left and right. They were actually losing money, uh, this Bitcoin mining operation when they should have been making money. So if this new company comes in, they're like, oh, this is going to be great. I'll reserve judgment. So 
That's it. I have no faith in every, anybody who is around that project. The, yeah, follow Aaron Ben and Tiffany Tong. They're great. Uh, please tell U.S. citizens when we might get Sweatcoin. Probably never. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be, let's see, Gary Gensler gets out of office in 2026, probably around then. So, I don't know, man. How many times does it want it to be burned before they realize Celsius are a bunch of frauds? I don't know. And like I said, I mean, Simon Dixon has much more faith in, in, in this new company than I do. So maybe he can talk some sense into me, but I just don't. Yeah, I just don't. Uh, and you know what would be great is if they do liquidate, what's, what's people are like, Oh, I lost all my money. It's awful. Well, you know what, when they liquidate and all these things happen now, you can actually claim this on taxes as massive losses. So like right now, you know, you can't because everything's up in the air in chapter 11, they could come out and it could be this, it could be that. I mean, talk to your CPA. I'm not a CPA, but, uh, I mean, I'd just rather them write them off. Then I can have massive losses and uh, I can carry those over for years to come. So I don't see. I don't see it. Thank you, Jeff. We all got played. Moving on. Let's see. I think that's it. There was a couple of things. Uh, um, to answer, there's a couple of questions. Yes, I'm still DCAing. I still... Uh, I still have big plans. I think we're going to see, I mean, this, this year is going to be pretty rocky. We talked about this yesterday and on uh, NFA, but uh, 2024 run the Bitcoin having, I think we'll start to see more, a little more stability, hopefully, if we don't go, to, go into a major recession. But I think like, here's a, here's the thing. If we go into a recession, I think it'll be, I'm, I'm hoping Q3 or Q4 this year. And the thing about recessions, they last about a year, right? Depending, maybe 14 months, maybe 10 months, eh, about, a, about a year or so. And then just a natural progression. So if we extrapolate that out, then where are we? Well, we're in towards the end of 2024 after the Bitcoin halving. And what happens after the Bitcoin halving? Usually we see uh, some major price increases and a little bit more like a stair step action. Not that it goes straight up, but it looks a lot better. So I think it's just perfect timing. I'm just hoping... It works out like that. And if we don't get a recession, we don't get a recession, right? Yeah. To me, it doesn't really matter too much because I just put my money away, I dollar cost average, and I take a look at uh, some factors of what I'm going to sell. There's a link in the description of the video of when I'm going to sell 80% of my crypto. And I take a look at a uh, multiple of, of, of data points. And you can put that into your plan or not. And do whatever you want to do. So Noah says... Are you worried at all about iTrust's custody program? So we had, we did an interview um, uh, from iTrust for their new custody program. And they're moving. So the, so the thing was, is that they're still, they were using Coinbase custody and Fireblocks. And the person that set that up was their custody provider. And then the new one, uh, ah, shoot, what was the name? Scaling, not scale. Fortress and Fortress, they're more of a, of a, not a better, uh, but they use the same, they, they use Fireblocks for custody services and a couple other different ones. And it'll allow us to like do not anything fantastic, just a different way they want to, they want to move or they want to uh, grow. So for me, as far as like the custody thing, the big thing that I liked about that was the documentation with the terms and conditions, which talked about they don't intermingle funds. And we took a look at uh, OKB, OKX, the uh, crypto exchange. They just were blowing up a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, I don't understand why this is going on because in the terms and conditions, it basically said we can commingle your funds and we can label it as OKX's funds. Watch the video, I'll show you. So for Fortress and for iTrust, they said they say totally different. Like we keep everything separate. It is in your name under your account. If something happens with us, we just switch custody providers and that's pretty much it. So am I concerned? 
yeah, I'm, good. I'm not a, I'm not uh, like a hundred percent sleep easy. There's always a concern everywhere. There's always risk for every type of investment you do. Great thing about, uh, about I trust and Roth IRAs is that you can't put, you know, you can't take your life savings and sell your house and your kidneys and your kids and go, okay, I'm putting it all on black. And then, uh, you know, gambling it away, like, uh, essentially what you could do, well, at casinos or, or actually any stock that's out there. So for me, uh, I'm not as concerned with it as, uh, as say like these DeFi plays or these centralized exchanges. That's it. <sighs> so meme says, but in PR, if you don't pay capital gains under the grant, how can we have capital losses? So I moved here in 2021 and the majority of my crypto was purchased in 20 because I dollar cost average in 2018, 2019. And well, actually every single year, I didn't sell all my crypto. So for my CEPA, what they tell me is even if you moved here, the crypto that you had before, it doesn't automatically hit like that. The day that you move here and become a resident and file for uh, Act 60, it needs to be 21 and 22. Uh, moving from that point forward, you won't have any losses as far as like, not losses, sorry, capital gains. But the stuff that you accumulated beforehand, that's still uh, detrimental to you because you're going to pay capital gains in that. And that's how it goes. So that's it. Hmm. So for, I guess that would be for me. For everybody else who's not in Puerto Rico, it's a little bit different. You have capital gains to pay. <sighs> Coquino says, how long do you plan to stay in Puerto Rico? We, well, we'll live here our entire lives, but uh, we'll be traveling. Uh, we actually go back to Texas uh, end of March. So we have to get, go back there for business. So. <laughs> Beardy says, Rob, can I get a move back lesson? You know, that's all I did for five years. I just in instructed uh, nurses, practitioners, and surgeons how to use the uh, wound back. I, it's been a while, but I could still do it. Uh, let's see. Rob, what are you buying at the moment? Not as much as I can. I got uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, the blue chips. Um, Cardano, Chainlink, Near, Polkadot, Avalanche. I'm always forgetting some and some other ones. And there's a couple of risky ones I don't talk about, but yeah, that's it. So MTB says, what do you think of Blur? So Blur just did, uh, there was an act, not an acquisition, but they're like, they're the NFT platform that is, uh, kind of going against open sea and their big thing is correct me if i'm wrong is not about uh, the royalties for the nft creators they tried to cut that down or cut that out and that went against what uh, open sea did and they were doing so well i think that the volume of nft that was uh nfts are being bought uh rivaled that of open sea and now you got more of blur now blur did a, a big airdrop and a lot of people that were buying and selling NFTs got a bunch of tokens, so it looks good. Me personally, I don't really get into uh, NFTs right now, so it's not a big, big thing. But for me, it just kind of comes down to this. Uh, people will always use a, a platform that is uh, faster and cheaper and really cheap. That's what it was down to, as long as the, as the quality is somewhat there. So who knows? Blur might be the next big open sea. I don't know. Hmm. Ba, ba, ba. So Noah says, cool. My only concern is that with the crypto is not subject to security regulations, what insurance we have that our crypto is safe in the event Fortress goes bankrupt. So again, and you can look at the terms and conditions at Fortress and also at iTrust. And you should also reach out to the, the folks that I trust and ask them the specific question. Because I'm just the guy who is talking to his computer on a really decent, a pretty good green screen. And uh, again, the video we talked about, it said quite specifically, uh, no commingling of funds. And again, there could be other 
other parts of that that I'm not privy to, but that's what I saw in the terms and conditions. And if there's not a commingling of funds, uh, that means that uh, your account and your crypto doesn't get mingled in with everybody else's. So they can't use your funds to buy condos in the Bahamas like Sam Bakeman Freed did the FTX people. That's it. James says, stay with the one true crypto. I got to tell you, I should just do that. It's much easier. I never, DeFi was always a, like everybody said, it's like the next big thing. And it's going to be awesome. And it, and it very well could be, but there's a lot of bumps to get there. So I don't know. Me personally, I just like, I don't know where things are going, but uh, that's why I like layer one solutions. That's why I like, you know, that's why you hear like Ethereum and Avalanche and Cardano and Polkadot, Chainlink solutions. Cause like what's built on Ethereum? darn near everything is built on ethereum if you take a look at how many erc20 tokens there are it's a lot so does that mean it's going to keep being that way who knows but uh you've got other players in there and that's why i do those things so even if like so like people build on ethereum they do DeFi projects or they do nfts or they do play to earn gaming it's all built on one thing right layer one solution so you can try to pick those winners but it's tough Uh, yeah, hoovering up blood. That's right. Yeah, fame MMA. Let's see. You better load up on Matic before ZK EVM release. You know, somebody said, like Steven over at uh, San Juan Smokehouse said he believes that uh, because Coinbase, they're working on uh, on the Optimism platform and they released this layer two solution called Base. He said, that's going to kill uh, Polygon. And I was like, I don't know. Because, I mean, Coinbase also came out with their NFT marketplace. I don't know how good that's doing, but I don't really hear too much about it. So who knows? I'm not for sure. But, you know, Polygon's got so many, so many partnerships and so many things are, I mean, it really does pretty well with the gaming sector, that's for sure. So who knows? I don't know. Is Cardano still a ghost chain? Nah. There's a link in the description. It's called Cardano Ghost Chain. It's a slideshow. It shows you why I don't think Cardano is a ghost chain per se. Onwards and upwards. Yeah, Johnny says, please try to, people trying to play the blur farming game need to be aware they are playing against 150 people who are controlling the platform. So do your due diligence before bidding. Yeah, that sounds risky to me. Like, you know, think about it this way. I don't know how risky people are. And people are, some are risky, some are not. Just remember this, like, you know, there's great gains to be had. So first of all, d does anybody gamble here, like in a casino? Raise your hand. I've done it before. Yeah. And uh, I think most people don't take their entire life savings and, and gamble. The majority, right? We'll say 95%. Right. But there's that one to five percent of degenerates who just cannot stop gambling. It's just how it is. So like for these these plays, I think the majority of people, I think, I'm not sure, are not degenerates. They just kind of want to like, well, maybe I'll make a little money and I'll, you know, I'll take 20 bucks or 100 bucks or ten thousand dollars or whatever, whatever is not big money to you and just kind of play the game and see what you do. I think there's no problem with that. Right. No problems with that. I just have a problem when people like they're sitting there and they're 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 gambling on leverage and they're going, I can make it, and they can't pay bills. That's the problem. But again, I'm not your dad. So you gotta make that decision for yourself. Now oh, JH says, Well, Rob's only my dad. No one else's. What he does isn't what you should do. Don't trust anyone after sell, FTX, et cetera. Exactly right. <laughs> oh that's pretty good norman said i sold a little bit of bitcoin ETH before they dipped a little and then um you know we did the meetup on thursday and i gotta tell you everybody that i talked to every single person i talked to at the meetup they're great at buying dips and dollar cost average they're fantastic at it you know what everybody sucks at selling everybody sucks at selling so like if you can figure the good times to sell i think that's the next narrative for the next bull run. And that's that diamond hands saying all the time. I think that's going to hopefully go away, but you're going to hear a lot of it. Diamond hands, bro.
Uh, Rob, have you looked into real world assets on chain? RWA is the next big narrative and this is low key. Why base launch with BlackRock in on it? That's interesting. BlackRock and base. Hmm. BlackRock and base, it'd be interesting. Yeah, real world assets on, on chain. You know who, want, who, who was doing a lot of that a couple of years ago and still doing it is, is Boson or Boson protocol. B-O-S-O-N protocol. They were, they were, so you could take your real world assets and put them in the metaverse and move back and forth, but we'll see. BNB is a scam chain. Ah, my favorite word, scam. Base will not kill Polygon. Wise Tree says, good morning. I do a little sports betting. Yeah, casinos, right? Nothing's going to kill Matic. Only 270 thumbs up pretty good i'll take on a saturday um yeah just look at how much was lost on super bowl yeah. well on the ads and things like that of course oh uh real quick impromptu poll i don't do many uh many live streams anymore uh just don't so i might do some more later but Probably not, but uh, people like the conversation to to keep going. And I think I, by me not doing the live streams, I kind of took that away from people. So I have a question for everybody. And Lucas brought this to my attention. What would be better for everybody, Telegram or Discord, to get a conversation going? And the problem I've always had with Telegram and Discord is the amount of scammers and spammers there. But what I'm going to do is whichever one that we decide to launch on, I'm just going to, the people who are wrenches here will probably be the admins over there. So we can do the same type of talking and they can protect people. And that's the, that will be the thing. And then of course, the link that you get to sign up will be private. And uh, there's a way to get it. But I first I had to figure out who's going to be, is it going to be Telegram or Discord? Hmm. Yeah, today is Saturday. Can you believe this? There's some houses open. There's some houses open. Yeah. If only we could sell from the hard wall without fees. You know that, but you know who's you know who's making a killing? Is the moon pays and the different play and the different uh, companies, wire or whatever else it is, that allow you to to trade and sell in your wallet. They're making fat fee, like five percent, six percent, four to six percent for sure. Like Visa doesn't even cost cost that much. PayPal doesn't even cost that much. But those guys, they're raking it. They're raking that money in. So, yeah, let's see. Telegram, Discord, 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 Discord. I'll do a I'll do a poll, like a real poll. Discord. Huh. Discord and give me a wrench. Why does everybody like Discord? I gotta ask you guys. Why do you like Discord? MoonPay is awful. <laughs> Mickey says I have Discord open all day, every day. No way. Solana's down. Huh. Eh. Uh, easy to use and everyone uses it. Can you... Like I use Discord on my on my uh, on my um, computer. I don't really on my Mac. I don't use it on the on the mobile device, but I really should start doing that. Hmm. Discord is a better layout. Less scammers on Discord, really? Ugh. Will Shaw says Patreon. No, Patreon is. But then I got a charge. And, uh, you know. Well, just save your money and put it into crypto. Bill Bones says, probably think about Celsius retail clawbacks. Bad news. I mean, you know. Uh... I will say like this, like uh, 
the clawbacks for uh, the people that were part of management, they should do. Retail clawbacks, I don't think, I don't think they should do, but they probably will. And again, I think this is, again, my, like people are like, Rob, you should cover this, you should cover this. I just think it's going to go really ugly for a while. And uh, that clawback will probably happen. And what will be interesting is that, you know, if that clawbacks, if those clawbacks do happen, I'm pretty sure the the new company, that Terra Wolf, whatever it's called, they're going to come out of that pretty happy because now they have all this crypto to play, play with. And uh, good news for them, they got at a massive discount. So I'm sure they're not going to be like, you know what? Let's not claw it back. So that's all I need to know about that, about them. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I had a rough night. That was good. Ben and Guy are both on Telegram. That's true. I'm in Ben's uh, that little Telegram group. It's quite interesting. Mm. Shoeless Joe. So, Rob, tell me to butt out. You know, it was YouTube your full-time job. We do other things. I don't do anything. So, like, I haven't worked for anybody since 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. And uh, no, like, I got into online education, and I was helping uh, nursing students pass their clinical exam. And this website, what allowed me to not work for anybody else was pretty great. And then I got into real estate. And that helped out a lot. It was uh, more long-term rentals and things like that. And then I, that worked out pretty well from the money I got from the website and then did that. And the money we did that, we got into uh, an Amazon business. Amazon business is uh, extremely boring, but it's quite profitable if you know what to do. It's very simple. You just essentially reach out to distributors and say, I'd like to give me your spreadsheet of the things that you have. And I'll pick which ones I want to buy. So like, let's say you buy like a thousand, 10,000 remote controls for an air conditioning unit. And then you just profit off the difference. You have them ship it to Amazon warehouse and they sell it for you under your, under your name. And then uh, also a sports facility in El Paso. It's just all sand volleyball courts. And uh, now we do more of uh, the short-term rentals and Airbnb. So this thing is, that's why, like I told everybody, like on the next bull run, when we hit the parabolic bull run and I, that video and link in the description where I talk about how I'm going to sell like 80% of my crypto. Once those parameters are hit, I'm stepping down and that's it for me. So what I'll do is to really drive the point home because everybody's good at, at buying, but everybody sucks. Well, most people suck at selling. And I think once it goes up and goes down, people are like, let me ask you guys this. How many of you out there are, are like, boy, I wish I would have sold some more when Bitcoin was at 69000 and Ethereum was almost 5000 and Cardano was $3? Or has everybody sold the top? Yeah, exactly. So to drive this point home of, you know, at some point we have to sell because things don't go up forever. Once I get to that point, I'm just going to step away and just like I sold everything and that's it. So I'll... What I'll do is I won't do any more videos in the, in the bull market because it gets crazy. And I'll be a reminder that you really should think about selling. Not that you have to, but I won't come back until things crash. So I got two years left. And then uh, that's it. It'll be good. I can do some other things. But yeah, like, like these days I feel like um, I feel like I should do it. So, yeah, but that's it. All right, buddy, coming up on an hour. I think that's good for a Saturday. So, look, uh, that's all we have for today. It was supposed to be an impromptu thing, but that's it. So, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Time to go to the beach, play a little volleyball. That's eh, in a couple hours. That's it for me. So, enjoy the rest of the day wherever you're at. Adios. <laughs>